Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, today I'm going to run you through how to fit a air horn to your vehicle. It is such a simple job. Um, i got to be honest, I really enjoy doing it. Um, I've also done two other videos alongside this one. So I've done one explaining how a relay works if you want a better understanding and obviously why we're using one. And I did another one on the circuit diagram and why I wired it the way I did and how I did it. So um, check out them other two videos, you know, just to give you the full picture. Um, I didn't want to condense it all into one video because I thought it might be a bit too much. So um, yeah, check them out and uh, let's uh, get on with it. And if you get value from this video, hit the like button and subscribe to support this channel. Right then everybody, so the first thing I thought I'd do is a bit of an unboxing. We'll try and get through this pretty quick so we can get on with the video. Now obviously this is a kit I bought off eBay. Um, all links will be in the description below. So uh, the first thing we have is the actual air horn itself. And then we have this little pump which connects with a little tube. Um, which obviously is what creates the air to obviously sound the horn. So um, that's them too. Now the next thing you're going to have is a little packet. And in this package, you're going to have some securing bolts, which obviously fit the horn and the actual motor itself or pump, whatever you'd like to call it. And obviously, it's also you've got some rubber mounts in you. Um, I'm guessing they just go on there just to obviously dampen the and make it a bit, you know, less likely to crack and stuff. I don't know, but uh, they're pretty cool. Um, now, there's obviously three bolts for the horn itself with nuts and washers. Um, whether you need these or not is kind of up to yourself. And also, it comes with one bolt to secure the little pump um, in place as well, which clips in. But I just cable tied the pump up. I didn't worry about the bolts, but the actual horn I bolted with two bolts. So Now, it also comes with a relay. Um, again, check out my other video on how a relay works if you want a bit more of a better explanation on uh, why and obviously what the relay does. But uh, this kit comes with a relay. It's quite a cool looking clear glass relay. So we're going to use that. Now it comes with this plug. Um, the best thing you can do with this plug is throw it straight in the bin. Um, it's completely useless. Um, I wish I, I, I didn't. I was going to take the time to explain why, but basically it's just wired up completely wrong. Um, so yeah, we're not going to use that. We're just going to throw that away and uh, wire it up manually. Now the last little thing is a switch that I bought separately. Again, I will put the link in the description um, to where I got. I just got a standard push button switch. Um, it's quite straightforward. Um, it does come with a plug and um, it's got about, I don't know, I think it's about six wires, but um, you're only going to need two. So it comes with a little O-ring in the bag and this securing nut. Um, I use the O-ring just to make it tighten in there a bit snugger, um, but it's up to yourself really. And there's the plug it comes with, with the wiring, so you don't have to worry about uh, connecting up to the back of it. You just join these wires. Um, again, I only use two. So, right. So obviously, Ford Transit Custom uh, battery is below the driver's seat. Um, now, mine's a single battery, so it makes it a bit easier. But even if it's a double, it doesn't really matter. Um, so first thing you've got to do is locate your battery. Obviously, we're going to take our lives, and um, for the horn. So I'm just removing the covers, get them out the way, and there's our battery. Now, the first thing we're going to do is obviously we want to take a live from the battery to our relay. Now I'm going to mount my relay right next to my battery. Um, if you're doing a T5 or if you're doing anything else, obviously just put them under the, under the bonnet for the battery. Now this is the wire I used. Um, I believe it's rated up to about 30 amps. So um, I'm going to run 15 amps uh, fuse in this circuit. So you, you know, that'd be more than good enough. Now I've got a little fuse holder. Again, I'll put it all in the description, everything I used. Um, it's a handy little thing. Um, it just makes it all a bit neater rather than just spades onto fuses. So I'm going to put an eyelet on one side of the fuse holder. Um, now I use uh, uh, like a, an automatic crimps, but any sort of crimp will do. Um, obviously make sure you've got the right color, obviously matching your terminal. Um, obviously I got blue to blue and give it a good crimp. Um, I'm only going to show you this once guys. I'm not going to show you how to crimp every wire I just thought I'd show you the first one just to make sure you uh, see exactly what I'm doing So now we're going to wire our supplies So the first one's going to go straight to pin 30 and then what we're going to do is make a link wire That's going to go to pin 85 
So that's our two lives. That's our live for our switch and our live for our co well, coil, basically, and the main supply on the switch inside of the relay. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to run one wire um, that obviously comes out with this fuse. I'm going to obviously put a spade on, and then I want another little bit of wire that's going to link over to the next terminal. So I'm going to twist two wires together and crimp them onto a spade connector. You might need to just cut a couple of frays off, obviously, to get them inside, but uh, I think mine mine fitted okay. Uh, these blue ones are pretty good size, so give them a squeeze on there and give them a crimp. So, like, what we're basically doing here, just to explain while I'm doing this, is we're basically going to link two supply wires to two parts of the relay. So, obviously, pin 30 is the wire that the, obviously, supply that goes through the relay, which will go down to the horn eventually. And then there's also the switch inside of the relay, um, which is pin 85, which we're going to, obviously, supply a permanent live to. And then we're going to use the earth side of the coil windings in the relay we're going to earth the switch so basically that earth is going to go down to the switch when we earth out that wire via the switch we're going to engage the relay which will engage the horn if you want a better understanding watch my other two videos um i got a video on how relay works and i've also got another video explaining how this circuit diagram works so i'm not going to go into it too much i'm just going to get on with the installation like i say i'm uh, taking the time to show you exactly obviously crimping and everything but as the video goes on we'll just get on with the installation so now we got our two wires for our relay our two supplies so obviously one the first one's going to go on pin 30 and the other one's going to go on pin 85 so that's our two supplies to our relay and that's going to get us started right so there it is there's our relay now um, obviously again I'm just pointing out that obviously you've got two supplies um, I'm not going to really go through why we're, 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 why we're going to switch to earth it's just a lot better system so I'm just uh, running you through that in uh, my other video so like you say if you want to check that out that'll give you a be better explanation Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove the driver's step. Now, you remove these two little, three little plastic covers and there's three torque screws. Um, it just pops up and twists out. So, I did notice that uh, I, th I thought the panel would come out without removing the, basically, the pillar cover behind the seat. But it turns out it actually clips into it. So, I had to remove the pillar cover, which obviously there's two pieces you remove. This is the bottom piece. And then we can get the step out. Now what I've basically done is run it from the battery under the carpet or the floor in and then run it up the pillar. So yeah, once I come along this carpet up underneath this floor in and then up into the dash. That's probably the easiest way of getting your wire in from your battery up into your dash. We're only going to run a single piece of two core um, up and uh, we're going to get into the dash. So we're going to remove this panel. It just clips off. Just give it a good pull. Um, and then we're going to have to take two torque screws to remove the side panel. So the first screw is just here. We're going to remove this black panel on the side. So we've got that one screw out. And now what we're going to do, we're going to look up. You'll see the cup holder. We're going to just lift that out. And then underneath that cup holder, there's another screw. So we're going to remove that screw. And we're going to remove. Now, I actually put my switch in this panel because i'll tell you the truth it was the easiest place to put it i could have you know took the whole dash apart and really messed about but it's in a nice place and I, I quite like how easy it is to get to with your right hand so there we go now they're going to earth you which i just pointed out um on the actual uh dash itself so they it's a good little place for an earth Right, there's our two core now. So I've run my two core under my carpet, and uh, obviously I've made sure I got enough length to reach where my button's going to be. So obviously my button's going to be just at the top here. Um, so I got enough length there, and that is all ready to connect up. Now what I'm going to do is just show you obviously where my battery. So I got my wire here coming out from under the carpet or under the floor in, and I'm just going to get this trim and put the trim back in. Um, I've already put the step back in. Um, and then clip that in place and then obviously clip the upper panel back in place all this there's no screws they, these two panels just unclip so it's really simple 
Now I've got my wire here just coming out from under there. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually, I didn't show it in the video, but I'm going to put two sticky pads on the back of this seat just to secure this wire out the way. It wouldn't hurt just to have it dangling, but someone might kick it or something from in the back because I got seats. So I'm going to run this wire and I'm going to cut it to length so it'll reach the relay. And I'm just going to splice it and then put two spade connectors on each wire. Now the two wires we're going to run from here, we're going to run, a, obviously we've got a red and a black wire. Now what we're going to do, we're going to make the red wire is going to go to pin 87, which is going to be the supply to the horn, which is actually going to set the horn off. And the black wire is going to be our switched earth, which is going to go to our switch. And that's going to be go to obviously pin 86. So that's our two plugged into our relay. Um, now what we're going to do is just tuck this in and we're going to connect the positive um, you can see there's plenty of room here so I'm just going to take a cable tie and cable tie it in so um, obviously if you're going to touch anything to do with positive on a battery always disconnect your battery first so I'm just going to remove the negative and just it's a bit awkward so I'm going to stick a rag under just to hold it away from the battery and uh, yeah basically now we're going to disconnect our positive lead and I can reconnect the supply up. Now there's no fuse in the holder at the moment. The last thing I'm gonna do once everything is finished is put the fuse in and uh, obviously test it. But um, for now, I'm just gonna hook this up. So that's bolted on there now. There's a nice little 10 mil bolt nut on top of the battery. It, obviously it depends what your battery is to how you connect it, but this is how I did mine. So yeah, I'm reconnect the earth there and that's, believe it or not, that's the battery side completely done. Um, I'm just going to cable tie that relay in place um, just to stop it bouncing around and knocking the wires off or the wires coming off and uh, yeah we're just we're, we're done in this area now we're just uh, obviously it's just come back and put the fuse in when we're done and there's the fuse holder obviously make sure it's in a nice easy to get to place um, the last thing you want to do is be struggling to find your fuse if you have any problems so we're going to go back to the dash now obviously we got two wires here now so like i said before the red is going to go to the uh, horn and then the black is going to go to our switch which is going to be our switched earth um obviously when we earth this wire out it's going to earth out the relay um so what we're going to do now is connect that to the blue wire on the plug that goes onto the switch um, that's if you're using the same switch as me if you're not just work out obviously it doesn't matter which way around it goes through your switch it's not the end of the world so here's where i mounted my switch um, obviously make sure whatever you use it doesn't foul uh, mine obviously you can see here now it's out of the way of these clips and out of the way of the cup holder um, and there is our plug um, it's a bit of a weird one this switch it comes it's got like six wires and you only need two so i don't know what um what the idea of that was but uh, it uh, works perfectly and it looks quite uh, quite neat as well so so yeah so there's the blue wire um obviously connected to the earth to my relay and uh, i've worked out the white wire is going to be my uh, wire to earth and then when i press that button it'll earth out now, so to get the power to the horn in the bonnet, if you look behind the expansion bottle, you'll see where the harness comes through, there's this little grommet. And if you get your hand in there, you've got to pull this cover back. And then just behind, you'll see this nice rubber grommet. Now we're going to remove this grommet. And what I did was I just took a pick like this and I just stabbed a hole in it and pulled it out. And then I drilled the grommet and obviously stuck my two core wire through it. So what I'm going to do is just feed it into place. Now, if you look through with the glove box pulled down, um, you can see I've run my wire across my heater box. I've then fed it behind the panel that covers the gear cables and then just obviously run it behind the gear cables along by the fuse box and then obviously across to where my switch is going to be. Now, also my earth point is here as well. So that's why I've done that. And there's my switch. Where's my switch is going to be? So what we're going to do, I'm just going to connect all this up and then I'll run you all through it. So there's my two wires now. So they're connected. So here is my switch all wired up. So I've got obviously my blue is my supply, well, like my earth from my relay. Um, and then the white goes straight down and I've connected that to an earth eyelet. Um, so yeah, there's my, obviously that, that wire there comes from my relay. Um, up to the switch and then back down this when I press it and it earths out on this bolt which is just obviously behind that panel where my switch is now the obviously the red wire coming out of that goes 
into the other harness which I've run from under the bonnet which goes down to the horn and then the black wire that's come out of it I have put straight to earth now I could have earthed the horn out underneath but I thought this was a much better place plus I like two core wire because it's a lot less chance of it rubbing through and stuff because it's a lot thicker so right so now the last thing to do really is mount the horn now this was the best place i could find for it um, now my vehicle has got an aftermarket body kit on it so whether you've got an inner wing gear or not i don't know um, so basically what i did was i marked the two holes uh, with a felt pen and basically there is three holes there's two on the back and one on the front but i only marked two holes um i thought two holes it's only light and plastic um you don't need a lot of holes so um now i use nut certs um i just well i had them available to me and it was probably the easiest way for me to do it so i've got a proper riv nut gun so i rivet two threads in there um just so i can bolt them into the threads um now if you wanted to nut and bolt it that's up to yourself or if you just wanted to cable tie the horn in place again that's completely up to yourself but this is the way i decided to do it i will try and put all this down in the comments so you can see what i used um so that's the front one done now that's the rear drilled and i'm just going to rivet that one in as well uh, it's a really simple thing to use these rivet nut guns and uh, they really work well so um yeah now we got that done we can uh, mount the horn so there's our horn mounted and um, you can see there's one bolt there obviously i've got the rubber in there as well and the back one now you can see if i just point there you can see that bit of rubber that comes with it um, i'm guessing it's just there to stop the vibration kind of making it crack or whatever but it's there so we use it now i've basically followed the harness from obviously where my air horn is up and then i there's a nice little bracket that the harness connects to so i've cable tied the actual pump itself to that bracket and you can see here you've got a positive and a negative which are labeled on the bottom of the pump so obviously black wire to the negative and the red wire to the positive and that obviously wires up to the end of the dash which is that simple and uh, and one thing i will say is obviously you can see i got these grills here so it's got room for the sound to travel um, and that's one of the reasons why i put it there so that's it we're all connected up we're all mounted um, we'll just put a fuse in as you can see i'm putting a 10 amp fuse in here and this was a massive mistake because it blew straight away so 15 amp fuse guys and that's what you need so uh, yeah let's have a look what it sounds like and uh, see what you think Right then guys so that's it all done and uh, yeah i'd love to hear what you think um obviously i have left my standard horn connected up as normal um so i've got this as a second horn um but yeah i uh, hope you guys liked the video and uh, hope it helps you guys with your uh, projects in the future and uh, yeah thanks for watching and if you get value from this video hit the like button and subscribe to support this channel